Recently, Phil's kicked off a new series on Move IQ interviewing people in property. But today, the tables are turning, and I'm going to be interviewing the property expert, broadcaster, voiceover artist that is Phil Spencer. Phil, welcome. So this is a little different. So Phil, mm. if I asked anyone who's male and talks a lot about property on the TV, I reckon nine out of 10 people would say- Martin Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I think they would say the legendary property guru, Phil Spencer. I mean, we were having a little giggle the other day, weren't we? It was a Wednesday night, and I think you were featuring on our channels on at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and 10 p.m. Yes. Yeah? Yes, so, three different programs. Three different programs. Um, by which time, even my mother was slightly <laughs> over me, <laughs> which might have been saying something. So, so how did you get into property? Um, I was always interested in property, but I think I was always interested in people as much as property and, and all that goes with it. And we, we are all fascinated with where we live. Everyone lives somewhere and most of us want to live somewhere different. I was an estate agent in the depths of the recession um, and I never sold anything and I didn't like much of what I was being asked to do in order to sell things. So I went off and got qualified. I thought, well, the depths of the recession, we are talking um, 91. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, I'll go and get qualified and come back to it. So I went and trained as a surveyor. Um, and after doing my degree in general practice surveying, I then set up Garrington Home Finders, um, which was the first of its kind. It was a buying agency to help people through the process. Of and you were one of the first to do that, sort of the property home finder. Correct, mm. yeah. I was working in southwest London. Kirsty also was some working in West London, there was somebody else in Belgravia. And yeah, there were, there were only three people back then. How it's, did you actually meet Kirsty then? She, we knew of each other um, because we were both doing the same thing and, and it was a new service and it was a bit of a niche business and it was starting to be written about in the press and that kind of thing. And so we'd read about one another. Um, Not we, arch enemies at that stage, well, we were, competition. We were competition. <laughs> um, although that was given there was only three people doing it, um, it wasn't very fierce competition. Yeah. But we actually met on the screen test of, of what became Location Location. And that has now been going for many years. This is our 20th year. That's very impressive. Yeah. And everyone loves it. And it was obviously a proven formula that, that worked. Um, I think we were very lucky because it was the first property show. And I always say, because it was the first, we had the pick of the formats. And it is an interesting process to to be involved in, to watch uh, and to work on people going out looking for houses because there's always decision and stress and emotion and drama and jeopardy and indecision and you know, it doesn't always go smoothly. So that there's, that there's quite a lot to go at in terms of, of what we can film. So how long have you been in the property um, industry? 25 years, Wow! I think. Wow, yeah. that's yeah, pretty yeah. impressive. And you obviously love it. Yeah. How did, um, I mean, you're a very busy man and you're very hard, hard to pin down. How did Move IQ come about? Move IQ came about, well, my history was home finding and that was my previous business, Garrington. Um, and back then I looked after a fairly small number of people and charged them quite a high percentage. And it was a very, very hands-on, personal, bespoke advisory service. And I always believed that at some point technology would enable much of that hand-holding during somebody's search and negotiation and purchase, that technology would enable that level of advice to be offered to a wide number of people. And we are now there that um, I can reach a large number of people and, and give them a, a ton of helpful advice. So that was, that was where the kind of the, the ambition came from. It's doing very well. I mean, Ask Phil Move IQ series, you get inundated with question after question. What's the most popular thing you get asked? Um, where does Kirsty buy her shoes? <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> no, seriously. Um, I think people sometimes ask very specific questions like where's good to buy at the moment? Or, you know, that's an impossible question to, to answer. A lot of the questions and a lot of my advice centers around the brief and focusing somebody's brief. In order to know that you found the right one, you've got to know what you're looking for. 
and you, you don't you know, buying a house is the biggest shopping expedition of your life when you go looking for a dress you, you've you've got in your mind's eye that's what I'm looking for and then when you see it you go that's it and, yeah. and, and it's a confident clear decision and, it's and you don't mind property. spending your money mm. actually that's the that's the result that you're trying to get to with the property that you walk in. That's what I want. You need to know your market. You need to know the types of properties and the values of properties as, as much as you possibly can. You simply can't do that over a wide area. What do you think the biggest challenges are for a first time buyer? It's got to be saving for a deposit, really, hasn't it? Banks nowadays are requiring ever larger levels of deposits. And the cost of living is rising and the cost of rents are rising. So unless you're living at home, it's becoming increasingly hard to save enough for a deposit. And it's very hard to buy a property these days for those first time buyers. Yeah, it is extremely hard. So Phil, is there a good time to buy? Um, it's each to their own and we all live in different situations and what's right for one person won't be right for the next person. I think a lot, a lot of people spend a lot of time and energy trying to track the market and go, yeah, now, now's the time or now's the time to sell, now's the time, now's the time to buy. My personal opinion is it, it's your home um, and if you happen to strike it right with the, with the timing, then, then happy days. But the odd percentage point of movement isn't going to... So you um, won't say like the spring market is the best time to... Th there are... Traditionally, there are busier times and better times to sell and, and, and busier and better times to buy. But I think it probably all evens out nowadays. The, the traditional um, uh, spring and, and autumn market isn't quite as buzzy as it used to be. I think it is, it, it is more evened out. So, Phil, I know you're a very busy man and you have fingers and lots of pies. <laughs> What's um, a typical day for Phil Spencer? Oh, <laughs> a day in the life. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not so sure there is such a thing, to be honest, Kat. Um, I have a great deal of variety. I'm blessed by lots of variety. And some days that stresses me out because I'm trying to do too many things in too many different places. And sometimes I think, well, actually, I wouldn't want it any other way. Y you're right. I'm involved in lots of lots of, of different things, but I, I'm very fortunate that I enjoy my work. I generally do enjoy it. I get a big kick out of it. On a filming day, filming days tend to be um, fairly intensive, 8.30 till kind of 6.30. Um, it slightly depends on which series I'm working on at any given time. I try and do one series at a time, but a lot of this year I'm filming both location, location and love it or list it. At the same time, I'm trying to weave in um, a series of stately homes as well as a series of Britain in a hundred homes. So it will, it at certain times it gets quite, um, yeah. quite busy. Quite the diary. busy and quite back to, back to. Um, And of course I can't film those series from anywhere near home because they all involve travel. Um, so certainly I, I at t certain times of the year, I um I spend more time in hotels than I do yes. at home, and that's the that's the rigors of the job. Yeah. Simply that I do need to get around the country, but at the same time, it's also one of the um, joys every, of the job is that I get to see the whole country. I, I really do. And every day is different. Every day is different. Well, on a non-filming day, um, there are such things. Then I'm concentrating on on Move IQ business. Uh, and doing the ask fills and, and just trying to get as much kind of advice and help as I can out there for people. I just heard uh, just before our interview this that you've bought a new toy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have bought a new toy. Well, that speed the day, the day well, up for you. Um, <laughs> you've got to tell everyone I, what it is now. <laughs> I do really, don't I? Uh, I moved out of London four years ago, three years ago. And um, the one thing that I miss about living in London was buzzing around on my scooter. So I did a huge amount of mileage yeah. and saw a huge amount of properties, but simply because I was mobile and I could duck in and out, borrow keys from an yeah. estate agent, I could see a load yeah. of properties every single day. And I don't get to use the scooter now I moved out. Of course of you don't, know. So I have just bought myself a motorbike that I can now oh. duck and dive. So watch out everybody for <laughs> Phil Spencer on his, uh, his fast motor. Yeah. <laughs> So Phil, I've heard something on the Move IQ grapevine, mm. that something to do with breakfast with Phil and something to do with eggs. Um, your intel is, is accurate, Kat, yes. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> well, to be really honest, breakfast is my favourite meal. Yeah. And I've always wanted to make a television programme about breakfasts and talk to I could. I There's love... no stopping you, is there? It's like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Breakfast, lunch, dinner? <laughs> no, just oh, breakfast. Just, just breakfast. breakfast. Favourite starts the day. There's well, loads of... Um, I'm a morning person. And, and I like to get up and I like to have some exercise and chat to people and cook breakfast. And I'd happily have breakfast meetings and things like that. People look at me, do you want a breakfast meeting? It's a bit mm. weird. 
Um, but there's loads of footage, there's loads of content television about lunch and dinner. This doesn't seem to be anything about breakfast. So in the absence of getting um, Channel 4 support about me cooking breakfast or talking to people about breakfast, um, I'm going to have a go on YouTube and talk to people uh, about their property decisions and their property life whilst we cook Over and breakfast. Uh, eat breakfast. And I get to eat a lot of breakfast. Lovely. Are you cooking the breakfast? No, they are. Oh, they are. The, the, the oh, idea I is see. that it's their favourite breakfast. Right, I see. And that they get to cook their favourite breakfast. Um, and if they are involving eggs, then I get to bring my um, fresh hen's eggs from my oh, own chickens. Nice touch. And then um, we can chat breakfast. And yes. I can also hear all about their kitchen and their property decisions and, and their property life. That sounds super. What's your favourite breakfast, Carol? My favourite breakfast. salmon and scrambled eggs. That's the same here. <laughs> Is it? With well, some avocado and, with and some homegrown tomatoes. And some chilli flakes. Well, away. <laughs> How do you do your scrambled eggs? Well... Uh, I sometimes put a tiny bit of butter and a tiny bit of milk, but okay. yeah, slow, slowly is the key, I think. Yeah. How do you do yours? With a bit of butter, salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper. It's, I'm amazed by the um, variances in how people like cooking their eggs. And of course, it's all subjective. Yeah, it is. I've got a Nigella little tiny whisk, which is yes. brilliant. Yeah. A scrambled egg. So you whisk them with a proper, with an electric whisk? No, or no, no, a tiny little Nigella loss and little yeah. tiny whisk thing. Yeah. See, there's so many debates. Some people use a fork, don't whisk it. Some I people know, say never put milk anywhere near it. Um, some people put milk. Some people whiz it up. It's, it's fascinating. so many different... I could talk breakfast and lunch. <laughs> well, you are about to, aren't you, uh, yes. on YouTube? At last. <laughs> so aside from the Move IQ and all the other millions of programmes that you do, what else is in the pipeline? Um, well, there's there's going to be a busy year. Uh, fortunately, people keep watching the shows I make, so I'm uh, privileged to keep they are, making they them. They are very good. I do watch them. Thank you. We've got another series of Location Location. I don't know what series. It's probably 26 or something <laughs> like that. Crikey. Um Starting this year, uh, just after Easter, and we're also starting Series 5 of Love It or List It at that point. Further down the track in the autumn, I, I'm hoping to do some more Stately Homes, which is my absolute kind of... Joy. Joy. Uh, mm. Bossman's Holiday, that is. And the, the series Britain in 100 Homes is currently showing up. Oh, I love that. Yeah. More for at the moment. So we kind of see how that tracks before Channel 4. It was you trying right to get calls. into that priest hole that made me yes. laugh. Squeeze, <laughs> squeezing you, in. You are quite tall and you yeah. managed yes, to I get did. in there. Kirsty's I mean... <laughs> house in Devon has a couple of priest holes. That's, that's uh, yes, really... I've squeezed into them as well. Wow, well, you carry on with your squeezing into priest holes. <laughs> 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 it was nice talking to you today. And to you. Thank you.